I think that nothing makes you appreciate your own culture and your own heritage more than moving away from it. And I'm sure that if you've ever lived away, perhaps uh, in university, as for a job, in the military, uh, for a time, I'm sure that you'll be able to relate to this. I know that for me personally, I appreciate my Welsh heritage and particularly my valley background more because I moved away from it, that I lived in England for uh, several years before coming back. And so when I did finally come back, uh, after my ordination to the, priest, uh, to the diaconate, I was sent to a parish in the north of Cardiff. And the priest there, Canon Matthew, is quite a, an expert at looking uh, at family history. And so I was quite intrigued to sort of delve further into my heritage, into my culture. So Canon Matthew helped me to sort of begin the process of researching the family tree. He's done his going back uh, you know, till, till Noah was in the ark. So I, was, I knew I was under uh, a good tutorage. And I'm not going to lie, I was actually looking in my family tree for multimillionaires, truth be told. I was looking for that unclaimed inheritance that I was going to get to that great estate that I was going to live. I was going to live the sort of the, the Lord Grantham lifestyle. Um, however, you may be surprised to hear that I, uh, I've, I can't find that estate. It's still to be found. What's really interesting is actually my grandfather did warn my mother and said, tell him to stop, because let alone sort of a great uh, richness there, my grandfather said, you're more likely to find pirates there than you are uh, to find any great wealth. What I did discover is that everyone in my family going back had been hard workers. And in the different parts of the family at different times, they'd moved from the, where they were living to South Wales in particular, looking for working opportunities, as many families did in that sort of late 19th, early 20th centuries. One family member, for, for example, I was looking at over on my mother's side of the family, lodged in a room in Canton, not too far away from the church, and spent his time going up and down the railroads, build, building the railroad, the Great Western Railway. Many generations down, uh, down, uh, have been down the mines, as you can imagine, being from the South Wales valleys. My father's generation being the last to work in the collieries before they closed. I just think, can you imagine me down a mine just for a moment? Absolutely not. So uh, I mean, it wouldn't be much good, I don't think. The Stanton family itself uh, found their way from sort of Gloucestershire, Worcestershire way over, over there, um, over to, to Port Talbot, to the steelworks, to boat building, to all that sort of stuff uh, involved over there. Such an interesting history of which I'm very proud. In my prayer life this week, uh, I found myself being drawn to one of the sort of the focuses of my, of my family, history, and, I've been, uh, and, I, and it sort of drawn me to one particular word in the gospel that we have just heard. It's a gospel which I think is so well known to us, isn't it? A gospel which I think is used for more or less every single service that involves praying for vocations to the priesthood and religious life. This week, I have been drawn particularly to the word labourer. The word labourer in that very popular phrase of the Lord, the harvest is rich, but the labourers are few. Being part of a heritage which, I have been, uh, which 
has involved manual working for so many generations. This word labourer this week has been rather intriguing and has resonated a little bit. For if we go to a building site, and to use a building site uh, for an example, and look around, you find that there are lots of labourers at the building site. But those labourers, uh, that word labourer encompasses so many different things. There's no one uh, word that fits all. There's lots of different roles, lots of different functions covering this word labourer. And each position on, in, in uh, that project is absolutely essential for that project coming to completion. There's those involved in the demolition of old structures. There are the bricklayers, the scaffolders, who if you've ever watched people put scaffolding up, you'll, you'll re realise it's the most incredible thing uh, that they do. Those who make and produce the doors and the windows, the plasterers, of which uh, my, my late uncle was, was very gifted uh, in, the electricians and the plumbers, the landscapers, there's so many, and I'm sure the list could go on and on. And so as we go back then from uh, that, build, that building site to the gospel, the labourers he speaks of isn't merely those few labourers that would go on to become priests or deacons or religious. If we looked at it just in that way, it's a very narrow way of understanding ministry, isn't it? The scope of the labourers, as we hear in the Gospel, of which there are few, requires everyone to play their part. We return, don't we, time and again to our baptismal dignity, precisely because that moment of our baptism becomes the springboard for our life of mission, our life of discipleship, of our unique calling by Almighty God to do something special and unique for him. And just like on that building site, each one of us is called to play our part. It requires a mutual collaboration. It requires that profound working together, using our gifts for the building up of the body of Christ. And what one person may lack in a gift in one area, another person will have in an absolute abundance. Nobody has everything. And while we may, and while we may use this gospel as part of a priesthood and religious life drive, and rightly so, we can see uh, the fruits of it, Priests are nothing without the collaboration and the support of the people of God. That one word, labourer, of our gospel today should put that uh, pay, pray and obey slogan to what, of the past to one side, to park it in history. That one word, labourer, affirms the unique calling and vocation of each and every one of us, without exception. And if we stopped and reflected and went on and spoke about the different disciples listed in the Gospel and the calling of the Twelve, we would soon discover how different they were, the different gifts that they brought uh, to the table. Is the reason why the harvest is rich, but the laborers are few, because we have lost our sense of apostolic identity. The great comfort in our life, isn't it, is that our apprenticeship with Jesus continues. It never stops. And thank God he continues to call us to mission. He continues to call each of us, each differently, each beautifully unique. Let us rediscover the value of our labours in the vineyard of the Lord. Amen.